going to do an exercise for you in this video that I hope is going to be helpful. It's actually two strategies that I use quite frequently um, to help with triggers, to help us um, manage our emotions, our thoughts, those intrusive thoughts and things like that. These are really easy to do and I wanted to do this in uh, one big video for my YouTube channel so that you have it handy if you need it. So stay tuned. So um, when I was going through a fair recovery, um, it felt like I was driving my car. Because if you can just imagine all of us on the journey of life, we have our own car, we're driving down the road. And, and for a typical person who has not experienced trauma or betrayal, um, we can see pretty far. We're like on one of those roads out west that you can see for miles and miles and miles. Okay. And uh, it's a clear day. Everything looks great. But when someone comes to us, our spouse says, hey, um, I've had an affair, <laughs> that sideswipes us, right? Um, so now our car has been derailed. Our car has, has had to take a detour. And um, all of a sudden it's nighttime and it's raining and you can barely see um, two feet in front of your car. You don't know where you're headed any longer. Um, you're scared and you're driving very slow um, you're very panicky. So that's kind of how it felt for me. So in that scenario, it's easy to let one of your passengers take the wheel. Um, our passengers include our thoughts and our emotions. So when we're triggered, for instance, um, something happens and we're reminded of the affair or we get a picture in our mind or we remember that um, text exchange we read or whatever it is. Instead of us driving the car, what happens is our emotions become so powerful that we get shoved out of the driver's seat and that emotion takes the wheel. Most of the time, that emotion is either fear, frustration, or hurt, which feed anger. So any of those or all of those could get behind the wheel of the car and we are helpless to what happens next. If you can imagine the car is the example of your actions, what you're gonna do next. What's happening in our minds, and I've talked about this in other videos, is that our PTSD, our trauma, lives in our amygdala, which is the fear center of our brain. When we're triggered, when the affair, we have memories of the affair, things like that, and that part of our brain lights up, the logically thinking part of our brain pulls down. And that's, that's a natural response. And that's, guys, we're wired this way. This is the beautiful way God created us in that um, to keep us safe, that amygdala, when, when that fires off in that panicky way, and you know what I'm talking about when we're triggered, right? The heart starts racing. We get that adrenaline flow. Um, we, get, you know, we're we're in fight or flight. It's the best way to put it. There's a purpose behind that. When we are in real danger, we don't have time to think logically. We need to get to safety. So that's how our bodies are wired to protect us. But those of us who have betrayal trauma or any other PTSD, for that matter. Um, our amygdala believes we're in that type of life or death situation um, all the time. <laughs> so when something happens, when we're really, I mean, a thought is not going to harm your life, but your brain thinks it is. So it, it puts you into that protective mode to keep you safe. But with our logical brain shutting down and quieting while that part of our nervous system lights up to keep get us out of harm's way, it's very easy for our logical thinking selves to take a back seat and let our emotions take the wheel of the car and go nuts. This is why we struggle so much to pull it together, to manage, to, you know, the things that we go and run and say to our husband in, in a fit of rage or anger, which can't stop ourselves. 
this was happening inside of us. So these two strategies I'm gonna walk through with you are going to be strategies to hopefully help you pull it back down. Now, it could be challenging to do these if you're in the middle of a business meeting that you're running or something like that, but many of us can find a way to do this. Both of these, by the way, can be done if you're in, in, if you're in a public place. You don't have to be alone. It's very awesome if you're alone. It's real easy to do alone, but we'll see. Okay, let me, let me unpack these for you and then you figure out how to do this um, for yourself and what works best for you. The first strategy that I'd like to share, I call the color strategy. And this is very easy. Here's what you do. Pick a color. Just pick a color. And it, it's helpful to pick a color that's that's readily available in your space. Okay. Um, for me, that would be yellow. There's a lot of yellow in the space, as you can see from the wall behind me. Okay. So if I were doing this exercise, I have chosen yellow. And I will start looking around the room and naming everything yellow from the yellow cross to the yellow step to the yellow thumbprint, yellow book spine, another yellow book spine. Do you get the picture? Okay, so that's what I want you to do. I want you right now to pick a color. Just pick a color. And I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds and I want you to start naming that color and what that color is attached to around your room. Good, okay. So in 10 seconds, you probably didn't quite feel the effect. Ideally, if you could set a timer on your phone and do this for two whole minutes, that is ideal. If you don't feel the effects, and by the effects, I mean your heart rate starts to regulate itself. Your blood pressure comes down. You're able to think a little bit clearly, more clearly. You. Um, you may, your, your, uh, your breath rate might regulate itself. Do you see what I'm saying? You're starting to think more logically. Your emotions are pulling down a little. Now, this is a great exercise to do outside. Both of these actually are really helpful outside. But if you're sitting in a restaurant, just start looking around. What you'll find that'll happen in this particular exercise is whatever color you picked, after two minutes of really digging deep around your environment, you will find that color in things that you never noticed before. Matter of fact, you will start seeing that color for the rest of the day because what you've done is you've redirected your mind to intensely focus on that one thing. Now, I don't think colors are necessarily triggering, but if there is a color that's triggering, by all means, stay away from that color. But try that out and see if that's helpful. Now, the second strategy I want to share is called the five senses strategy, and there's a hundred ways to do this, but this is how I do it, okay? You might have heard the, about this one before. I try to spend at least one minute on each of the five senses, okay? So if you're alone, this is a really helpful one to do alone, but you can do it in public, but it is helpful to do it alone. Get your phone and you set a minute for each sense. This is fantastic outside too, by the way, as long as it's nice weather out, this really helps you get in tune. Start with your touch, okay? If you have to um, rub your hands together, uh, pinch your hand, uh, rub your hands on your thighs, um, really focus on the sense of touch. Are you cold? Are you hot? Um, what kind of sensation does your, your skin have right now? Um, then go to sight, what do you see? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What do you taste? Now, smell and taste can be challenging. Um, I have essential oils here at my office and at home. So perhaps you start opening up essential oils and really smelling and, and kind of really tune into those. Um, and there are some that can be very calming, like smell some lavender, do things like that. For taste, go, go fix a snack and really focus on the intent of that for a whole minute, okay? Both of these exercises, the five senses and the color strategy are meant to help us ground ourselves in the present moment. 
a lot of these strong emotions that bubble up and shove us out from the driver's seat and get behind the wheel, they're showing up in force because we've either been triggered by something in the past, we're thinking about something in the past, or we're worrying about something in the future. Very rarely is that happening because of the present moment. <laughs> most of the, not all the time, but most of the time when these things happen, we're actually safe in the moment. We're just triggered. Both of these exercises help us bring it down, help us to be present, help us to realize we actually are safe so that we can lean into whatever is actually happening in the moment. This is a fantastic strategy if you were actually, say, on vacation with your family. And this is the first vacation you've had since you found out about the affair. And, and you're trying to have fun. You're actually trying to enjoy yourself <laughs> as hard as it is. One little thing happens and you find yourself going, oh, here I go, here I go. Try these strategies. Pull yourself back, focus on, on your five senses, focus on that color so that you can then focus on your family and have a good time, okay? I hope this is helpful. Um, find some way to keep this handy and then come back to it if you need a refresher, okay? I want this to be a helpful tool for all of us. This is actually, both of these are really great strategies if you suffer from really bad anxiety. Um, if you um, struggle with, um, uh, you're afraid of, of public speaking and you have to be a public speaker, it, all of this helps your brain bring it down. Just bring it down, okay? All right, I hope this is helpful. And this is just uh, a couple of strategies that I give everybody, actually. But uh, these are things that I work with my clients on all the time. So if you're looking for a coach, I'm a master certified coach and I work with folks just like us who've been through a fair recovery, who are trying to remain in their marriage and build a healthy relationship with our spouse beyond um, his affair. So if, if you're looking for a coach, I invite you to schedule a free consultation with me. That link is right below this video. I've got a bunch of freebies down there too. I really hope you take advantage of it. Free consultation, no obligation whatsoever. And I uh, actually do I, I coach you on the call. So <laughs> you can uh, uh, give me, a, uh, go ahead and schedule something with me and we can see if coaching is a good fit for you. And I hope these strategies are very, very helpful. Keep them handy.